the areas that we will be learning today so basically we will go ahead with and give you an overview of exam machines and where to look for them exam like machines basically and then uh, we will show you how what is the approach that one should usually take to solve an OSCP exam machine then um, so here is the list uh, by the way if you would like we have embedded uh, a QR code here you can scan it with your mobile phone uh, with your normal camera or you can download a QR code application and then um, th then scan it so that you can basically uh, you know kind of reach the link that we are showing you in uh, on, on the screen and guys um basically guys on this screen uh, we can see that how the offset portal looks like uh, where we can do the pg play machines hello everyone welcome to 591 labs uh this is another episode of our oscp series uh, where we have been trying to deliver one of the best content available on the internet for oscp preparation based on our years and years of experience in the field so basically uh in there have been two more videos that we have uh, presented previously on our youtube channel if you have not already please go ahead watch those as well and make sure to subscribe to our channel so that as we continue to deliver more and more such content you are notified in a timely manner so the previous two videos were more and more focused on the general guidelines and what to expect in the OACP exam and how 591 lab can basically help you achieve the success in an accelerated manner right so obviously you know OSCP is is quite a lot of effort and if you have a helping hand without any doubt it accelerates your progress and we want to be that helping ha helping hand for you to accelerate your progress expedite your um, your journey and eventually pass the OSCP which literally would uh, open the doors of several job opportunities maybe even business opportunities for you so it's one of the most uh, well respected certification globally and we wish you luck in your journey and without further ado let's move on to the first slide so as always we are basically 591 lab and we are the top IT training and certification exam brand in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan and Singapore. Our mission at 591 lab is to provide our clients with exceptional exam preparation experience for the certifications for uh, companies like Cisco, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Palo Alto, Offsec and Fortinet. So what we on a fundamental level do is try to uh, be a helping hand like i said a while ago and assist our students in ensuring that they understand all of the exam requirements and we um, remain with the students um throughout their journey like we don't say hey we have trained you now go take the exam now we like to be with the students uh, throughout their journey so that they feel more and more confident and more and more empowered so in the next slide i have shared some of my um, introduction related content so basically i am a red team lead uh, in several ethical hacking groups and companies so what i basically do is uh, i don't know fsm security operations all across the globe in, in in different areas and i have got over 12 years of experience in the industry and my in the industry experience overall is basically very diverse um, and it uh, encompasses software, hardware, cloud areas uh, that really builds, you know, the kind of the stamina and the expertise and the skill set level that equips me to help you guys um, and be at the same level because really there are there are many opportunities for offensive security engineers these days and there is a shortage of uh, workforce as well. As you might have already read some um, some of the articles if you just uh, read them on the LinkedIn uh, in the, on the platforms like LinkedIn, not limited to LinkedIn, of course. And then um, I'm super passionate really to train people. Like obviously, you know, learning something is one thing, and then having people trained to be on the same level and maybe even even at a greater level really than you is something that that motivates me and inspires me to continue to uh, help people get trained get more and more skilled so that they can lead the future of cybersecurity. that's what my intent is and that's what is the intent of 591 lab as i said so so basically we are here to help you guys in all possible ways and uh, with that we are going to tell you some of the 
uh, areas that we will be learning today so basically we will go ahead with, and give you an overview of exam machines and where to look for them exam like machines basically and then uh, we will show you how what is the approach that one should usually take to solve an OSCP exam machine and then um, by machine it basically means a target uh, so if you have already watched our previous videos you would already know that uh, offset basically gives you a couple of most likely six uh, machines or targets that you need to compromise or hack into to obtain certain number of points so the total number of points required is 70 and you will have to compromise at least some four to five machines out of the six provided to pass the exam but obviously there are tips and tricks which we have uh, shared in detail in our previous videos so we would love to see you on those videos as well and then uh, we'll show you how to register with OFSEC basically because right now even if you have not ever attempted uh, any OFSEC certification um, or any other training with them we will show you how to start that journey then uh, we will come to the practical demo which is really is the real meat of today's video so then um so here is the list uh, by the way if you would like we have embedded um, a qr code here you can scan it with your mobile phone uh, with your normal camera or you can download a qr code application and then um th then scan it so that you can basically uh, you know kind of reach the link that we are showing you in uh, on on the screen so you can pause the video if you need to uh, but in general we are going to talk a little bit about this uh, about the content that we have on, on on the screen so this is a list of tznl as it says their netsec focused trophy room so basically this is a very well documented and regularly updated list of machines that version should expect in the oscp or pen 200 course so if you see clearly it has a section of proving grounds play if you scan the barcode and reach the link you might see a few other sections as well by the way remain focused on pwk v3 right because that's where the latest content is so if you remain there then you can see that there is this section of proving grounds play now what is proving ground play let me tell you so proving grounds play is basically uh, 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 an, an area uh, of offensive security where they have a couple of machines such as the election stapler monitoring etc those are the machines that they have and they are they have kind of run them free of cost you can just sign up and then uh, if you are part of their um, their let's say portal then you can access those machines have your practice and have your practice done as much as possible so that you can get a feel of where, uh, of what to expect in the real exam or even in the real life so to say because uh, the offset exam pattern and everything is really is really driven towards what you normally expect in the real world so uh, scan the barcode save the link we will also uh, put the link by the way in the description box as well so that you can access it from there but we have here with you a few options to access that so then we uh, come to the practical demo. So what to expect in the practical demo, guys? So we are going to use a couple of tools for today's uh, stuff. Obviously, as we move along, we are going to see a few other tools as well. But let's start with those. Nmap, Network um, Port Scanning Solution. You might already be aware with this. Um, we, you might already be familiar with, with the tool, but um, we will show you a few ways through which you can uh, do deeper scans and specifically enumerate versions of the different applications. Then we have Rustscan. Now Rustscan is, is, is kind of a very, very handy tool. Why? Let me tell you. Uh, so basically Rustscan is a fast scanning tool. Like normally if you run Unmap and want to do a complete port scan, you would be like waiting for minutes and minutes which is not really a permissible way when you are sitting in an exam and you are you need the port scan results as soon as possible those are the situations where rust scan comes into play and says hey let me do the scan very quickly so we will show you by the way where to get that how to install that and it's free of cost that doesn't cost you anything but it's good that you know about these kind of tools then we have WFuzz. Uh, now this basically is a fuzzer. If I just click uh, to the next slide, basically there is a small description as well against each of the tools. So WFuzz is basically a web fuzzing tool. Uh, now what a web fuzzing tool does is that for let's say you have uh, an and uh, and you know an application. Let's say https colon slash slash example dot com. Now obviously as a normal user 
that they would browse the application see what is what's inside what's not but we are hackers we are pen testers and we are security professionals we want to enumerate it through an automated ways how do we do that we do that with the help of w fuzz like tools uh, there are a few others as well right so i like w fuzz um, and i will show you why <laughs> okay but uh, as such you know uh, when you run the tool uh, then you are able to enumerate what's available after the slash right after the url uh, that uh, that is normally um, you know available such as such as https colon slash slash example dot com slash and then after slash what are the possibilities those are the possibilities which wfuzz will help us identify or enumerate so with that said uh, let's uh, go ahead and move to the third tool that we will be using that is metasploit framework so basically metasploit is is um, is a very well known uh, let's say tool which is used purely for exploitation so even in the normal realm of events that we follow we try to first enumerate to discover the services and then eventually do the exploitation so this comes at the third stage so to say after you know that what is your target and what to what kind of attacks you can run then you can use metasploit as one of the options to perform the attacks then finally um, there will be some illustrations in uh, of the overall system the kali linux that will be shown you in just a few minutes and uh, just to give you prior to you know getting into the details uh, we would like to give you a higher level picture of how you can approach literally any machine any target during the exam during the labs or you, you know when you are even doing a real life pen test on a very high level you can move from left to right in such a way first of all you do the enumeration okay uh as we said before enumeration is basically performing scans using nmap rust scan or wfuzz then we try and access the low privilege uh level uh you, you know user account and once we have the low privilege level user account then we can move ahead and try to do the privilege escalation so that's the way of approaching almost any machine okay so with that said uh, we can go ahead and take a deeper look at the offsec portal and also at the target that we are going to uh, let's say try and exploit okay so let's go ahead and see how that part looks like and guys um basically guys on this screen uh, we can see that how the offsec portal looks like uh, where we can do the pg play machines so if you want you can also scan this qr code to directly reach the pro uh, the proving grounds play page where you can register and also power on and off the machines so let me give you two things um an overview of two things which are of utmost importance so first is a vpn if you can see on the upper uh, right hand side so basically there is this my kali and then vpn you can optionally use the offsex own kali linux machine but i highly recommend that you download the uh, the virtual machine in your own laptop or, or pc whatever you are using and then run all of stuff th from there for that purpose you will need to click on this uh, this vpn button from where you can download a file and then i will show you how you can connect to the vpn using this file and uh, also if you would like we can also create a video on how to install the virtual machine and set it up the kali linux one uh, please let us know in the down below in the comment section if you need such a video and then we can certainly work on that as well and then um, but for now uh, we will also link some guidelines in the description box so that you can um, you, you can try and deploy that and also always always feel free to reach out to us we would love to hear from you and work with you uh, to, to solve any challenges that you're facing in your journey so down below you can see that there is this uh, description uh, there is this heading of proving grounds play in this heading you can see that there are a few machines that we have searched like dc1249 these are the machines which are somewhat uh, exam like okay so that's uh, these are the ones that we will try to solve so to start with we will do today the dc1 machine and in order to do this you need to power it on on by pressing on this button and if you press on this button it gets powered on and then it shows you the ip address in the second column here which you can then scan and try to enumerate now you might be asking uh hey um 591 lab how do we register with offsec so here 
it is so you can uh, browse to this link or uh, to register with offsec you can even register with them for as little as twenty dollars and uh, proving ground play then will be completely free, free for you and then you can but you will uh, eventually need to enter your email address phone number etc for doing the registration we recommend that you use your own information or you can also use some temporary information using uh, tools like temp-mail.org that's your uh, that's going to be your choice so with that and with that said we are going to basically uh, move ahead with the uh, with the practical demonstration inside the kali linux machine let's uh, let me now share that part of the screen now So here we go. This is my Kali Linux. So inside Kali Linux, as you might already be aware, this is basically the go-to tool for all of our hacking needs, right? So if you can see on the left-hand side, these are guys, by the way, my notes, and I would like to uh, love to share those with you as well. If you uh, if you need them, just let us know in the comment section or reach out to us actually, and then we can share with you some of our uh, internal documentation that helps you expedite your journey. So. As you can see, we have uh, on in my cherry tree. You may want to use your own, um, you know, favorite tool for note taking, but I like to use cherry tree. It's simple, it's straightforward, and it's out of the box in your, uh, you know, in, in inside the inside the Kali Linux. So the way I have organized my work is that I have a template which is pinned here. Now in the in the template, I have a um, you know, list of general commands that I use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in my pen tests or exam preparation, helping the students, etc. Then I have a section for Windows Prevesc, Linux Prevesc, and also for ADE. Now, if you are following our previous videos, you might already know that ADE is now something very important because that is worth 40 points, an entire 40 points by solving three machines in a very straightforward manner i always always stress that that you know the the ad is basically a low hanging fruit some people fear that it's too difficult but it's it, it really is not and we recommend that you uh, you know certainly consider that so um, the way we normally approach the machines for example right now we have powered on the dc1 machine as i showed you on the slides and now uh, the approach i usually follow is that i copy this whole content control a control c then I would go to the section that I am trying to target. So in this case, it would be PG Play. Then press Control Shift N. What's the name of the subnode? I would like name it, let's say, DC1 for uh, 591 Lab, something like that. Uh, and then I press OK. Then come here and then say uh, paste the whole content. Now that I have uh, pasted the whole content here, now uh, we can start the overall process. Now, what's the overall process? You might be asking yourselves so the overall process basically is that uh, you know you can come here and go uh, to the first of all you need to connect to the vpn as i said on the slides basically you need to download the universal.ovpn file once you register the offsite portal you can see uh, the uh, the link to downloading it on the upper right hand side once you download it it will be placed in your downloads folder and then you can write this command open vpn downloads universal.ovpn i have already run this command so that that is the reason why it's um it's kind of uh, working for me already so once it's done then we move ahead and do rest of the stuff because now vpn is connected and we can see the machine right away so what do we do so what do we start with Basically, we start with a tool like Rustcan. If you would like, you can also Google it. You can type in Rustcan um, GitHub releases, and then you will land on a page of GitHub, GitHub that looks something like this. From here, you basically need to download the .deb file. Once you have the .deb file, all you have to do is basically run this kind of a command that I have I had typed in uh, in here: dpkj, uh, dpkg minus i and then the rust scan file that you will have downloaded it may be named differently for clarity but you can basically access it and if you we will also link this um this url in the description of this um of this video but you can also choose to 
take a note of this and search it for yourself so once we have this then we basically try to find out the ip address of the target in our case this it's this one which i showed you on the slides once we have it then instead of nmap that most of people use we will just use basically this thing which is which looks like this so we know the ip address and um, this is the command rust can minus a the ip address minus g minus u 10000 you hit enter and then you wait for some time uh, for the results to pop up i have by the way the results in my hands as well but i would rather want to do it in real time so that you guys can kind of feel how it looks like when you do it in practice So, as we have seen, it has done freaking the entire port range scan from 0 to 65536. And that too in a matter of few seconds. I have really not paused, not accelerated the video. It's not forward the video. It's, it's straightforward. So, as you can see, we have a couple of ports that we have identified. Now, we just copy them. Go back to our cherry tree. DCV1 in the port section. We post it like this. Now, uh, I like to work in a systematic way and I highly recommend that you do that too. For that to happen, you basically would do something like this. Uh, so we have port 80, 22, 111, 46, 32. Now, as a beginner, if you will, if you want to really, um, you know, master the skills, I recommend that after having the port, um, you know, scan done, you should do two things one in the background and one in the foreground right so we have the list now we go here and try and do the nmap nmap minus uh, sc minus sv then we put the ip address of our target oops not this one maybe actually this one put the ip address of this thing here and then wait for the scan to run and in the meanwhile uh, for this, uh, basically, uh, when, since we already have the information about the ports, what we can do is is we can go ahead and look for Hectrix. Hectrix, if you don't know, is basically a website that has information about the potential attack factors of different protocols and ports. So once you reach here, all you have to do is is wait for it to load first of course and then on the left hand side you can see it has a lot of documentation around uh, several ports and protocols so if you go here you can search for the ports that you have identified for example we identified 8443 we click here and then we will be able to see the port 80 and what are the attack vectors on this port possible let's wait for it to load Again, right now, I will show you also other ways of accessing. So, port 80 basically is a web port. So, you can also access it by typing the URL inside the uh, inside your URL bar. And then you can see that it's a Drupal site. And it is asking you for a username and password. You can also create a new username or request new password. So, basically, normally what happens is that we can try to take the uh, simpler route. And the simpler route, a lot of times, is basically using Metasploit. Metasploit is not allowed for all of the machines um, but for most of these it is allowed actually so as you can see it has opened the 8443 port pen testing methodology you can choose to access it after the um, uh, after the video of course uh, but in general it's a very helpful tool and we just wanted to share it with you for a general help uh, purpose it's uh, we will follow some of the some parts of this guideline as well so if you go back to our nodes and actually to our nmap, how does it look like? So it looks like it has identified the port 80 and showed us some further information like it's Apache HTTP. So please make sure to take note of all of those things. Like you have identified the port. So we mentioned that hey, under port 80, we have this thing identified. Similarly, we can move ahead and see other ports as well. But maybe we will be lucky and uh, compromise the box with the help of this port simply. So now that we have this port, we can go ahead and try to spin up Metasploit. MSF console minus Q is the command. Uh, you can remove minus Q, by the way, if you want to. Um, it, it does not matter, largely speaking. It just, um, you know, minimizes the, the, the banner that Metasploit shows normally at the start. Let it start. Oh, 
on maybe i'll pause the video and wait for it to run or even better i can actually have you go through some of the notes so basically once as we go along we need to um, enumerate other ports as well so we can even go ahead and have another pane open nc minus nv and then put the ip address here let's say it was our ip address by the way IP address is this one so we can actually copy this one and then say nc minus nv control shift v and then port 22 what's there hey our metasploit is open oops uh -huh, i got too excited so basically uh, the port 22 is running this ssh version we can just copy this one as well and put it under our nodes so similarly we can do the same stuff for the remaining ports as well but to start with uh what did we find by the way we had found the you know the 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 uh, Drupal on the web interface so we can possibly use this exploit which is normally well known for the for, for you know um, websites that are running Drupal so if we type in like type it in like this then we can we'll have to wait for some time for it to load Come on so once it has loaded, you need to type in options. So what options do we have? We need to set the R hosts, the L host. For L host, we will say L host turn zero. Now turn zero is basically the offsec VPN um, interface. So it will simply set that and then set R hosts. R host, what's our R host, guys? It's this IP address. R host means basically uh, remote hosts. Uh, so type it in like this and then we try to see if this exploit basically works we try to run it or better yet let's type in exploit both work the same way but exploit seems like more you know fun doesn't it so let's wait for some time how the thing looks like so it has started sending the stage and if it works we should see metal projector command prompt let's see hey we have the session open let's wait for a few more seconds hey yes so if we type in get UID, we see that we are running as ww um dash data so now that we know that we have done something okay so what does this show it basically shows that we need to uh kind of um uh, we have got access but we can um you know try to enumerate it even further which we are going to show you in just so basically you can just basically you can just type in shell and then you should be in an uh, interactive shell who am i ww data okay that's good now we can type in python minus c import pty pty dot spawn bin bash and that's it with a little typo and that's it now we are in a more interactive shell and we will also post these a few of those commands in our notes section as well so once you are here uh, we can try to uh, identify some of the ways through which we can basically do privilege escalation one of those is gtf4 bins if we search in our notes section then we can see that there has to be some command which shows us if we can do gtf4 bins so if we type in this yeah we have some like the find one exim4 etc so let's go back to our browser and show you the gtfo bins website so gtfo means basically get the f out okay so if you go here then there are several uh, linux command line utilities that help you do privilege escalation so once you run the command that we showed you a while ago you can then try to see what are the options for privilege escalation so for example we had suid set for the suite we can run this kind of a command to do the privilege escalation and uh, now by the way by suite it means that whatever command is run with find that runs with root privileges so we can try to read even the root file system with the help of this kind of a command so for example normally if you try to do let's say ls slash root you might get an error like uh, permission denied but we are hackers and we like to go around it for that purpose we can just do something like this control c this command and then c we can see the commands now as you can see we can read the proof.txt as well as the final flag.txt files so let's try to do it like this um like here so we can see it says 
uh, well done hopefully you've enjoyed this and learned some new skills all good now similarly we can also try to let's say uh, read the flag which is this one um, let's say proof dot text if i copy this one and paste it here then we can see this is the flag now in offset exams you should always couple this flag save this flag inside their exam portal and then take a screenshot like this which uh, which you know takes this much information inside of it like the flag and then the ip address of the box and ideally host name as well such as in this case the host name is dc1 so this really concludes the overall demonstration that we wanted to show you and there are going to be quite a few new demonstrations which will be coming up so with that let's move to the conclusion section so let's come back to our main presentation so as a conclusion we really thank you for staying with with us in this video and we would like to tell you that uh, you know uh, we are always av available for help me help you even more and then you can also expect a few more videos on the same topic um, in order for you to accelerate your learning journey in the oscp and uh, you should always remember that practice is key to the success right as it says here on the slide as well that practice is really critical to mastering any new skill and especially the pen testing one it requires you to continuously um, learn the skill set and we recommend that for doing the practice and staying in touch do subscribe to our channel and press that um, bell icon so that you can be notified as uh, as soon as we post new videos with such a great content uh, such a learning material you should be notified and also feel free to reach out to us if you need more in-depth assistance with this kind of content and uh, and uh, you know if you need assistance in accelerating your journey of offsec um of offsec exams uh, in, in this case OSCP so that concludes uh, the overall presentation that we wanted to share with you and I thoroughly loved doing the presentation and I would love to do a few more have a good rest of the day or night depending on your time zones bye bye guys